about trying to identify orchids that are typical bug magnets and maybe get ahead of the game with regards to them coming into our collection and us being a little bit more aware and on point with prevention so that possibly notorious bug magnets do not actually manifest themselves as such. Desiree Grace asked me this question and basically if this were to be a ninja clip I would say Desiree, all orchids attract bugs. Thank you very much for your question. However, <laughs> I thought this question was super interesting and I wanted to expand a little bit more on it and give you my thoughts, my observations. You know, awareness is key, things like that. But yes, in general, all orchids will attract bugs at some point or another. And besides that, I have already done a dedication clip of my Rincolalia Cattleya Sunya Green, the mystery bud that was forming for the last six weeks that I was very apprehensive about. First time bloomer, I won't go down the squirrel road of being distracted by this bloom, but I just wanted her to feature in this video and give her a little bit more airtime, including a Blooms For You episode that may have already aired. So anyway, yes, this is Rinkulalia Sunya Green, keeping us company in between the footage that I have and possible footage I do not have right. So, Desiree Grace, everybody else watching this video, thank you so much for being here. Yap, 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 let's get on with it. These are my observations when it comes to orchids qualifying as bug magnets. First of all, terrestrial orchids. And the reason being, they will be growing mainly outdoors in climates where they are hardy enough. So we don't really keep an eye on them as much as we would our other orchids that we have indoors in a grow space or a greenhouse. So in my mind, the biggest culprits are cymbidiums that would attract scale very quickly and aphids because they also bloom during a season when not much else is going on. Late winter, early spring, nature is waking up Here's an orchid in bloom, woohoo, here come the pests. Another category that can be considered bug magnets would be any orchids that have a soft structure to them. Very green leaf paphiopedalums, mastivalias, Oncidium Alliance orchids would come into that category because their structures don't harden off even when they age. And in some cases, they also bloom during a season when not much else is around. Specifically, I consider Zygopedalums would be in that category because they bloom early spring, supposedly. Some can bloom a little bit later, <clears throat> but having been starved of any kind of provisions from nature, bugs will immediately zero in on anything that is in bloom during that time of year. And well, Zygopedalums fit into that category as well as some green leaf Paphiopedalums. I also mentioned the soft structures as a separate category because we always consider that anything new growth or new eyes that are developing are prone to attract pests. But some of our orchids have soft structures all the time and those are the ones that we need to be very very aware of of course i will not include the happy sap because desiree mentioned that in her comment but highly fragrant orchids and specifically hybrids the scent of course attracts all kinds of pollinators which act as the transport vehicles for pests like aphids, mites, and mealybugs, piggybacking onto the bloom, and either they stay at the bloom or they migrate throughout our orchid and settle in where they find it a little bit more shady and not as exposed, using hidey holes to make themselves at home. You may have picked up on the fact that I've just made an emphasis on hybrids, and that is because sometimes species are a lot more resilient to pests because of how their genetics are. They have not been messed with by another parent who knows what other genetics come in there. Hybrids are a lot more vulnerable and when they are highly fragrant, they usually have more than one bloom, more than one growth in bloom, and all of a sudden, the vibrancy and the vigor of these orchids are like beacons of light for pests and they just wander in and enjoy everything the orchid has to offer. 
Another category that we need to be aware of when it comes to pest magnets are nocturnal fragrant orchids like angraecums. Not only because the blooms are white, it is very, very difficult to see the pests, but they attract the pollinators at night. Again, we have the hitchhikers maybe on the backs of those pollinators, and we don't spot them soon enough until we see an accumulation. By the time we see an accumulation, we don't necessarily have a problem, but we won't be wrong in saying this happened overnight because that's exactly what it did. Let me also add that Brassavola orchids are also very, very prone to those kind of pests because they are nocturnally fragrant as well, as well as any hybrid that doesn't have another dominant parent in it. The hybrid with a Brassavola orchid would attract the pests because of the nocturnal fragrance. Now, obvious, obvious point in my eyes is vibrant and colorful blooms, the ones that just glow and shine during the day, even if they're not fragrant to our nose, because we do not see what an insect, a pest, or a pollinator sees. We see with our naked eye, beautiful lip, beautiful column, beautiful petals and sepals, but the color spectrum of a pest sees something completely different and their sensors are finely tuned to be drawn into the bloom because the bloom is there to pollinate. To what we consider a pest, the orchid is exuding some kind of signal, maybe pheromones that we can't even detect and the pollinator is going, hello, happy days, here I am and it's gonna stay and multiply. Speaking of tender structures, there is another category that is a pest magnet category, in my opinion, and that is seedling orchids. Tender structures, small structures, making it very difficult to even spot the pests because the young ones like to go and settle themselves into those structures because they haven't built up the strength to bite into something a little bit more mature and older. So seedlings are something that we really need to keep an eye out for. They are not only vulnerable because we're trying to grow them on and get them to blooming size with all their little quirks and necessities to get them to do that, but they are extremely vulnerable when it comes to pests as well. Their structures being tender no matter the age of the structure. And then there's that one category that we should be very, very careful of if we're growing in organic media, and that is orchids in decomposing media. Decomposing media will attract all sorts of pests that love to feed on the bacteria of whatever is rotting, whatever is decomposing, fungus gnats, springtails, mold, white fly, you name it. And yes, I include mold because if mold is not addressed, it will take over everything that we are trying to protect, especially the base of the orchid, the stem of the orchid, as well as any growing eyes. So for me, mold is a pest. Decomposing media is a bug magnet like no other. So in general, <laughs> all orchids attract bugs. <laughs> like I said, this could have been a ninja clip, but you will have noticed that pest magnets are orchids that have any point of tender juicy structure and those that bloom during a season when there's not much else to go for. That would be winter, late winter, early spring and late fall because while everything else is winding down, some of our orchids do come into bloom, start new growths, are developing spikes, and all these structures are pest magnets. Now we have our specific seasons that we need to be more aware of, and I would say, look out the window and see what nature is doing. And if it is fast asleep, trust me, parts of nature is wide awake and our orchids are there like an open invitation. So instead of hibernating, they take advantage and accept that invitation. Now there are probably many, many other examples that I have not mentioned in this video, but in my opinion, from what I've noticed here in my climate, the most prone are on this list. And then there is this beautiful time frame that is coined getting to know your orchid, because you may find that within your collection, you have candidates that qualify as bug magnets, whereas others you've never had a problem with are in the same collection. And they will always be pest free, even though there's quite a close vicinity amongst the one that always seems to get it, as opposed to the other that grows as a neighboring orchid and 
never has an issue. You may also find that when I talk about pests in my collection and addressing which orchids I find are a bug magnet, like my Cattleya holdenii from day one, which now no longer qualifies as such, but the damage is always there. I consider my Cattleya holdenii a pest magnet, whereas a holdenii in another collection, someone would say never had a problem with that orchid. So this is just a little guideline, things to be aware of. And I hope that this answered your question, Desiree Grace, and I hope that it was of interest and of help to anybody else that watched this video. I am grateful that you joined me. Thank you very, very much. I could show my Sunya green off. <laughs> been staring at the viewfinder trying not to trip over my words <laughs> so thank you so so much for your question Desiree Grace and anybody else that has a question for me I've got the ninja clips quick rapid fire Q&A and then if the question comes out that I find could be elaborated on a little bit more could also be of interest to other orchid fanatics as was the case with this one I'll be very, very happy to put out a video for you. Thank you so, so much for watching. I am now going to take my beautiful Sunya Green back into my indoor blooming alley and smell that gorgeous mojito without the mint citrus fragrance while I do so. <laughs> Have yourselves a beautiful day. Please, on one condition, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.